Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my Waffle Square, where I obsess about things and you get to benefit from it. Well, in this video, we are going to test and review the Greenworks 24 volt underhood light. Now, I'm neither paid nor sponsored by Greenworks. I purchased this unit right here with my own money. Now, full disclosure, about a year and a half ago on my home improvement channel, uh, Greenworks did reach out, send me a set of hedge trimmers for my independent review for free. So, Let's unbox it and see what comes in the package. All right, here's everything that comes in the package. We have the unit itself, three manuals. We have one two amp hour battery and the included charger. So the first thing I notice when I pick up the unit is that the build quality is really nice. There's no real sharp unfinished edges. Everything seems to have been ground down where the two sections of injection molded plastic come together. There's some uh, rubberized feet, uh, nice smooth rubberized finish on the grip handles. The uh, power button is very tactile. You can hear the click to it. Second thing I noticed about the unit is watch when I try to open it up. You have to really force it open to the point where you think you're going to break it. And that's due to this uh, metal clip right here and this little raindrop shaped piece of plastic that come together and hold the unit together. So at first I had to look in the manual just to see how to open it because I thought I was going to break it. But once you figure that out and you're not afraid of it anymore, you won't be you won't be worried about uh, opening and closing it. Each side of the light has a really nice finished hook that goes around the hood or whatever else it can reach. That pivots all the way around 360 and holds itself right there. So it's not going to be put into a position and then by its own weight kind of spin. It has a semi locking um, section on both sides. It also extends quite a bit. We'll do some measurements to see how much that is, but it's got a nice spring tension. Feels like it'll hold really well. The cover for the LED is completely clear. Uh, there are some out there that have more of a soft box uh, finish to them to kind of flatten the light out or smooth the light out. This is a uh, straight view through to the LEDs themselves. Now the battery is a two amp hour battery. That is a pretty decent size. And I love that it comes with a battery life indicator right on the battery. Uh, now, surprisingly, when I press this one, as you can see, it comes straight from the factory and in, in our case with no charge whatsoever. So I'll be interested to see how fast this charger can handle it. Uh, one thing I am impressed about it is that it's a 48 watt charger. So that is a pretty decent uh, sized amount of output. And when I look on the charger and on the light itself, I see four uh, slats here uh, on both. That means that there is a good amount of information being shared between the charger and the light, probably for heat and uh, that sort of thing. So um, I liked seeing that. That means there's some information being shared back and forth and that leads to battery longevity when you have more smart technology in the devices. To close the unit back up, you simply break it at this little center point and it clicks back into place for easy storage. Let's take the battery and the charger inside and test how long it takes to charge from completely depleted in this case and whether or not that raises the temperature of the battery in any alarming way. All right, let's plug our charger in to the battery, start our timer. You can see we are getting a blinking green light. That means that it is in the process of charging. If we were getting a solid green light, that would indicate that the charging is complete. A flashing 
red light means that there is an issue with the battery and a solid red light means that it is uh, at a temperature too high to charge. Base reading is 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, 46 minutes to go from fully depleted to completely charged. That is really impressive. Way better than this 12 watt charger that came with the hedge trimmers I originally reviewed. Here was my thoughts on how long this took. Wow, four hours and 17 minutes to charge a two amp battery. That is pathetic. Uh, possibly the only thing worse I've ever seen is this little tiny charger by Ryobi that slips over the stem on their battery. It, this is not a serious charger, but I have to say, like, this isn't either. Good news is it charges so stinking slow that the battery is actually a degree cooler <laughs> when it was done. And with that much speed, let's see, uh, we raised, what, a few degrees, 86 degrees now, nothing much. Well, now that we have our fully charged battery, we can finally get under the hood and test this light. So to put the battery on, this couldn't be simpler, you slide it on the rails, clicks into place. To remove it, press the white button on the battery itself, and it slides right off. All right. We come right up here and with these soft hooks, just hook right around, stretch it over here to the other side of the hood. We're good to go. The uh, on and off switch is right here in front of me since we went in this direction. One push is the highest setting. Another click gets us to the medium and a third for the low setting. One more for off. Let's try the highest setting just to see what it looks like. Now, if I was working here with the light coming right at me, it is distracting. Thankfully, I have my hat. But the nice thing about this light unit is because we can pivot those hooks, we can simply grab it and just start turning it to wherever we're working. So this is casting light all the way around here. If I wanted to get down a little bit more, say we were working on the uh, back area flushing out the heater core or something. I could turn it more that way and it is a good amount of light. Now I had been using a light that had little hooks on it and I was having to take this piece of parachute cord, click it onto the uh, locks for the hood and then hang it from there, which worked good, but the light was always way up here. The thing I really like about this light is it's so versatile, we can get much lower down here if we want to and concentrate the light right in this area here. If we're changing spark plugs or um, igniter coils, any of that sort of thing. So it's really cool underneath the hood. Now I didn't get this impression from reading the manual, but if you've had a, the light on for a few minutes at any setting, when you press the button, it turns off. So you don't have to cycle through every one of them, which is quite different from this little magnetic light I have that no matter how long it's been on, you have to cycle through all the settings to turn it off. So I like that feature. Now my regular viewers will know that I'm about to do an entire video where we're gonna remove the front seats and completely redo the leather on them. I'm just waiting for it to come in the mail. So a great tool for getting some light in this dark vehicle might be to set this guy up like that, turn the light on, and now I'm gonna have really good lighting in here when it comes time to remove these seats. And if I need to see down there a little bit better, with the doors open, I should be able to get right over here with the steering wheel. Yeah, gets right in there. Now this probably goes without saying, but the same can be said for the back seats here where I can put that right into place, even turn the light. And now I've got a great view of the back of the seats to get at those bolts and also the plugs for the wiring. And if any of my Land Rover enthusiasts were curious, if you're camping or overlanding, you can put it on the uh, top half of the trunk. You just have to go diagonally across the door. Now here's an interesting little fact. The light does not fit 
on our biggest vehicle, but works great on our smallest vehicle, this Honda CRX. In fact, to use it at all on this uh, hood, you would have to break it in the middle here enough so it'll hang, but it hangs down so low that it would be in your way trying to do anything. Now I'm currently doing a build series on this van. I'll leave a link to the playlist right here. And it's gonna have lighting throughout the uh, ceiling and underneath uh, shelving and things like that. But during the process of wiring and building all the cages and everything, this would easily stretch across the 74 inch spread inside. Just out of curiosity, I took a tape measure and confirmed the range was from 56 to 80 inches. Well, the manual says that the runtime for high is four hours, medium is six, and the low light setting is nine hours. So let's put in a fresh battery, turn it on, and start the timer. So in my testing, the high mode lasted three hours and 55 minutes, which I would call good at their claim of four hours. The uh, middle mode, which is supposed to be six hours, uh, lasted so long, I actually had to fold it up, take it with me in the van to drive over to my daughter's softball game to film it. Ninth inning, bases loaded, two outs. Yes, yes! One RBI for the tie. And two for the win! Yes! Our senior, Jesse Farrell. Her last home game of her high school career. <laughs> Coming in clutch. Which is one of the most exciting endings of a game I've ever filmed. And that lasted five hours and 52 minutes when I got out of the car to head over to the field. So I would call that one good. In fact, the only one that fell a little bit short in my testing was the low setting, supposed to be nine hours. It lasted eight hours and 40 minutes. Now that's still 96% of the claimed runtime. And that was with my older battery. This battery is a year and a half old. So a 4% degradation in a year and a half is fine by me. So I would call their claim claims of runtime to be spot on. Now after that nearly nine hours of running overnight, I took temperature readings on the battery, on the light, and right above the battery here. And both the battery and the light were just a couple degrees above the ambient temperature in our garage. The only rise in temperature really was right in this area as you can see in this picture that was 92 degrees, so that was probably a good seven degrees or so above the ambient temperature, but that's really not a lot for running full time for almost nine hours. Well, let's conclude with the pros and cons. First, the pros. The overall build quality of this unit was excellent. I was really impressed by how uh, well made it is compared to the hedge trimmers I reviewed a while back that uh, seemed a lot lighter weight of plastic um, and had no rubber whatsoever. This unit is really hardened and well made and uh, I was very impressed with it. Next would be the addition of the 48 watt charger, which is such a game changer. Uh, the fact that you can fully charge a completely depleted battery in 45 minutes is fantastic and I applaud Greenworks for switching to a better charger. While we're on the subject of the battery, the battery life on this unit is excellent. And interestingly enough, in the Waffle Square Universe timeline, I'm actually recording this video while we are doing the six hour test that is the video before this. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Where till I get going? Next would be the fact there is no discernible flicker on most of my cameras when I'm recording, especially my primary camera and my iPhone. Now, as you see, this little charger here sets off several of my cameras and has a discernible flicker, so I can't even use it when I'm recording videos, and I love the fact that this one is tuned just right. The only one camera that was slightly affected is my B camera here, the EOS R, which I simply switched the frame rate down to 1 60th and no flicker. Always a consideration when I'm recommending a tool is the battery platform. And as you can see in this picture, Greenworks has tons of tools available for their 24 volt platform. 
Finally would be the versatility. There's all sorts of other uses besides just putting it under the hood to add lighting. The next time I use my quick jacks to lift up one of my vehicles to work on it, I fully expect to be able to take this and link it between the two sides of the quick jack and get all kinds of lighting down underneath the vehicle. You could also use it for making blanket forts, for stuff outside if you're camping, and maybe underneath a bunk bed if you've got uh, kids wanting to tell ghost stories or something. I, I mean, the possibilities are pretty limitless when you need to hang it from something, and I love that. Now the cons, and really there's only one. When you first pull the unit apart to set it up, it is very difficult, but I'm already seeing that it's becoming easier. So I think with time and those parts wearing and relaxing, that's just going to resolve itself. So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithms to start suggesting it to more viewers like you. Also, please consider subscribing. We're right in the middle of a nice long series where we are refurbishing this 2006 Land Rover LR3 and there's a lot more videos to come. Now I'm gonna leave a link to this light in the descriptions below. Full disclosure, that'll be an Amazon affiliate link. So if you click on it and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month. It helps to justify all the time it takes to light and record these videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.